Any animals in your country? Right. I know I'm playing with the And it's my pleasure to welcome all of you to today's special dedication ceremony. We're here to dedicate a new postage stamp that commemorates the 150th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. We are here today, 150 years after the Battle of Gettysburg and President Lincoln's deliver, delivery of his immortal Gettysburg Address, focusing on that monumental task as we remember the sacrifices of those who fought at Gettysburg and heed Lincoln's resounding charge about the soldiers to, in his words, never forget what they did here. It's a pleasure to be able to welcome you here on behalf of Gettysburg. Thank you for coming. The issuance of the Gettysburg Commemorative Stamp is a wonderful honor and remembrance of the Battle of Gettysburg, the soldiers that fought here, and the impact the battle had on freedom, quality, and on our national future. In a, stamp, in a sense, the stamp can also be considered as a remembrance of the sacrifices of the citizens of Gettysburg for the soldiers who fought in battle in the area around Gettysburg. Historians are often fond of saying the Civil War was fought on 10,000 places. Today, we gather at one of those places, the hallowed grounds of Gettysburg, to dedicate one of the newest stamps in the U.S. Postal Service's Civil War Sesquicentennial series. Introduced in 2011 and will continue through 20, 2015, this series of stamps commemorates the 150th anniversary of the Civil War, one of the most important events in American history. So now, on behalf of the Postal Service, I would like to ask those on stage to join me for the dedication of the Civil War staff. When the war began in 1861, the students of Gettysburg College, which was then called Pennsylvania College, jumped to action. They formed their own military company on campus, they conducted drills, and they participated in a number of local public meetings and demonstrations in support of the Union cause. Two years later, in June 1863, their time had come to serve their country. Governor Andrew Curtin called for all able-bodied Pennsylvania citizens to help defend the state against the Army of Northern Virginia, and our impassioned students were among the first to respond. A month later, after the battle had swept through our campus and our town, our students demonstrated a different type of courage. Many returned after July 3rd and discovered that Pennsylvania Hall, our primary campus building at that time, had been occupied as a Confederate military hospital. In their dorm rooms and in their classrooms, they found hundreds of wounded and dying Confederate soldiers. Despite the fact that their campus was in a shambles, that their futures were uncertain, these students helped care for and comfort these soldiers, those enemy soldiers who had been left behind. Service in the name of justice, but also compassion to all fellow humans, regardless of our differences, was part and parcel of a Gettysburg model of citizenship then, and that continues today. Andrew Z. Blevins was my granddaddy's great-granddaddy, I mean granddaddy, this is my great-great-granddaddy. This is his son Ephraim, my granddaddy's uncle, and the one in the middle is John R. Baldwin, my grandmother's great-uncle. He was a brother to my grandmother's granddaddy. 